You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get out, Get the point. Good. And now... Fendo. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. And guess what? It is another Freaker Friday evening. And you are listening to Grammy Mary in my rocket chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10. Also on the RLM... um, Tune in radio station, the RLM internet radio station, RLM radio.xyz site, and the RLM Spreaker channel, formerly known as World Truth Radio, and uh, later to be on YouTube, BitChute, and um, iHeartRadio, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. <laughs> yeah, what really happened? What really happened? That's one of those things that, man, these. Uh, Last couple of weeks, I have had my mind totally blown about different alternatives of what really happened. And yeah, you know, there's an awful lot of, I didn't do it. I don't know. I didn't do it. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I really don't. I wasn't there to see it. But I do have a little poem here from my dear sister-in-law. Roses are red. Tacos are delicious. Use paper plates because I hate doing dishes. (laughs) It may not be a Taco Tuesday, but by golly, I do agree with that sentiment right there. Okay, she's over here. Ivan Perez is over here on Fakey Book as well as Raymond. Hey, Raymond, what's that you just shared? Um... Ah, a note to his lovely bride. Say hello to Elsa for me. Uh, let's see, is there anybody else? Akashic Records, mis- uh, Manifesting Demystified. Mm. Some of the things I've been listening to lately, it's like, ooh, this is not a good thing. This is not a good thing. Let's see. Um, other than that, I really don't see anybody else over here on Fakey Book. Let's go check out realliberty.org. I see Grim is over here. Thank you, Grim, for letting everybody know that I am live and in place. And I also see Laid In Again is over here as well as Ant and Vinny and Bob Renner. Hi there, guys. Looks like Java Doctor was here for just a little bit ago. And, uh, let's see. Don't really see a whole heck of a lot of, most of the rest of them have been here hours ago hours ago that's okay they have a life and I do too and today was my day off and so I took my day off and 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 listened to a lot of I seriously did just kind of sort of listen I watched a little but listened to um, several videos and um, I also uh, wound up watching through my eyelids on one of them (laughs) I was knitting I was working on my eldest daughter's project and knitting just does that to me of course it doesn't help that um i didn't get much sleep last night the neighbors and granted my neighbors are you know pretty good distance away from me especially compared to uh city dwellers um they're 150 feet 200 feet away from me across the road and over yonder all that fun stuff but um she has moved to nebraska with her new hubby and her son is living there now and oh good lord about 1 30 this morning subconsciously i hear this sound and i'm thinking the hell is somebody running a chainsaw outside my bedroom window what the hell and then it got louder and louder and louder and i'm thinking there's going to be it and that's when i woke up i thought oh my god there's going to be a tree falling through my roof Holy shit. Come to find out, it was the kid across the street. He was playing with his diesel pickup. Had that damn thing floored for probably a good 10, 15 minutes. And I know I didn't get back to sleep till about 3, after 3 this morning. So it was like, thanks, you little snot box. 
<sighs> oh, some of the joys of living out here in the boonies. You got to deal with some of that crazy stuff. Um, oh, wow. Enter now to win some anabolic steroids online. Wow, Grim. That WKDNXQPWS shares some interesting stuff over here on Freedom's Network. I also see Grimmies over here, or was over here, as well as Cowboy Tech, Bungle in the Jungle, and Bob Renner. Um, and thank you, Grim, for letting everybody know that uh, I am live over here as well. I haven't seen Bob for a while. What is this you, that you liked, Bob? Bob. Bob, 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 Bob. Oh, there you go. CDC stuff. Yeah, that's nested juju. CDC is nested juju. Okay, over here on Twitter. Hey, I've got more followers. I have broken the 540 mark. Of course, you know, every time I say that, something happens. And I think people probably actually listen to a podcast. <laughs> And then they go, who's this crazy woman? Oh, my God, I'm not going to follow her. Christ, she'll get us in all kind of trouble. Yeah, probably I will. Probably I will because you just got to keep up with me. I know where to dodge for the most part. I know where dodge is, too. It's south and east of me. But <laughs> thank you, Barman and Grimner, for letting everybody know over here on Twitter that I am live and in poison as well. I also see Blackbird9 is over here. And Dan Bongino is sharing all kind of stuff about the framing of Michael Flynn. I'm going to, um, I don't know if I want to wait for the book or not. I haven't decided yet. I also see Vinny is over here. Hey, Vinny, how you doing, hun? Vinny's everywhere. Vinny's, Vinny's like a virus. He infects everywhere. <laughs> It's not necessarily a bad thing because sometimes you need to have that brain worm going on, you know, <clears throat> digging those little tunnels and leaving space for you to fit something else in there. Oh, man, I've had a lot of brain worms lately. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, man. And there, there's Ocasio-Cortez. Oh, my God. That, that woman is like, I just look at her and I think, Bambi, Bambi, I got to. I got to move away from there because I can't stand that shit. Making me crazy. Um, okay. Over here in Real Liberty Media, which is where you need to be if you want to give me static. And by the way, yeah, today my internet is really um, stinky. Not good. I'm thinking one of my strings may have come loose. Because, yeah, I don't even have the four full four bars today. So, yeah. Yeah, I see that, Graham. That spammy account. That's, that's, yeah. I didn't, you know, even when I saw that picture, you know, I, I don't care um, who you are. I just, I don't care for that much, you know, definition. It's like, wow, you know, if you're going to work out so much that you've got every single little muscular line showing through your skin honey honey you need to get a life seriously i mean that's that's my personal opinion i mm, i think people need to stop being so obsessed with yeah oh well <clears throat> moving along moving along over here on the rlm which is where you need to be you want to give me static and most definitely today i will not be able to uh play along on the speaker thing if you know even if i were so inclined because yeah not a real good interwebs signal here phone service has been really crappy out here too lately so mm. oh well in any case, right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Cowboy Tech, who is always, always hearing pleasant voices. And I, I got to figure out where in the hell he gets that from. Because, dang, I, I want to do that, too. <laughs> I also see Grimner is here, the RLM god, as well as the lovely Moose Goyle, who's got a new pabby. Pabbies. I love pabbies. I, I have two. And they will forever be puppies because they they just have that, that mindset. They're just goofy. Um, Grimmy and Moose Girl, by the way, will be on later on this evening for the Freaker's Ball. So be sure to check that out. I will not be able to stay up and play because I got to work early in the morning. 
Mm, I'm going to bed early tonight. I'm, I'm ton pluckered tonight. That's just all there is to it. I also see the lovely Kate is here. Hey there, Kate. How's things in your world? And looky there, Mr. Asmodeus Asmo is here, as well as the lovely Chloe. Chalcedony is also logged in. And looky there, Cycles is here. Hey, Cycles. And another Chloe with an extra E. So you can go, Chloe. I, or at least I can. Flash somebody is also here. I'm here as well as I be Don C. Meister Bra. Hey Woody, how you doing, hun? Ponder Gander is also here as well as we got some pox going on in the box. Uh, oh, cowboy can't listen from this location. Darn it. That's okay, cowboy. I'm just picking on you anyway. Um Got a double pox going on here, poxified and poxophone. We also have the lovely Rain is logged in, as well as the RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. Roams is here, and looky there, Vinny. So we got a double dose. We got a Ponder Gander and a Vinny. I think that's Vinny and his evil twin. What do you think? We also have Phantom in here. Hey, Phantom, how you doing, hon? As well as Beetle. Hi, Beetle. Colfax 101 is also logged in. As well as that cyborgian noodle. Cyborg noodle. May you be touched by a cyborgian noodling, especially on this Pastafarian Friday. Every Friday is Pastafarian Friday. And I'm not having pasta tonight. Sorry. I haven't to, I may have to <laughs> I may have to pull something out of the freezer and pop it in the toaster oven. I do not microwave. I do not. I explained that to a coworker the other day, and she said, oh my God, how do you do without microwaving? And I said, very easy. I either slow cook it on the stovetop or in the oven or the toaster oven, depending on what time of year it is, because if it's in the summertime, I use the toaster oven, not the big one. Hmm. And, you know, you can make a lot of really easy things, like make yourself some oatmeal or whatever. I have... um. One of the, it's not a Keurig, it's off-brand, but K-Cups still work in it. But if you take the whole K-Cup mechanism stuff out, and you just put you a cup with some, some real oatmeal down underneath it, and you just do your water down into it, and then put like a plate over the top of it, you can do oatmeal that way too. And it's cool, it's fun, all the different things you can do with these little, little gadgets that you get. I have entirely too many gadgets. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, Gadget Grammy. There you go. Where was I at now? i would off on a tangent. That's where I was. Hi, Dakota. How are you doing, sweetheart? How are things way up there in the cold white north? I also see Frumpy is here. Hey, Frumpy, as well as Gromit. Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is also here, as well as JJ's, that wonderful feller from Scotland. And it looked like JJ's was playing billiards earlier today, at least according to... Uh, his Twitter account and drinking adult beverages while doing so. Last I saw, he was down three. That's not a good thing. Vinny forgot to push play. Vinny, you're always playing, hon. You are always playing, you silly man. Moving along, I also see Kozu is logged in. <laughs> Good job, Grim. You can reach him. I can't. Um, <clears throat> moy, 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 moy is also logged in as well as pom 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 sauce. And looky there, sock puppet. Hey, sock, is it warm in your neck of the woods too, you little hottie? And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the F Bominator who hasn't F Bominated in quite a while. But hey, Skittle, how you doing, hun? Oh. And Vinny's here just in time for 420 in the in the uh, land of Cowboyek. <laughs> Cowboyek is that like Slavic kind of thing, or is that is he is he in collusion with the Russians? <laughs> Everybody's in collusion with the Russians. Just ask the corporate lame ass propaganda system. They tell ya. They tell ya. Except for them, they are not in collusion with the Russians. Cause yeah. They just don't, they don't do such things. Let me tell you. Okay, so we'll click on that. And, oh, did I say hi to everybody over here on Mines? Hi, everybody over here on Mines. Oh, my God. They even have Cortez over here, too. Good night, Charlie. Or for her, buenos noches, Carlos. Oh, 
This feller looks very sad. Retroactivism looks very sad. He's got Q drops from two days ago. Q drops. I think those would be uncomfortable, don't you? Hmm. Moving along. Moving along. I'm going to come over here to my pocket. And something that uh, my dear sweet Lisa B had shared the other day. Um, just got to put this out there, which by the way, I, I don't, I can't believe it. I'm just so surprised. I uh, got a notification from YouTube yesterday that someone has subscribed to my channel. And although my channel has lots and lots of videos put in different little categories like brain food and blessings and healing and, and all of this other fun stuff, um, I don't really have any videos of my own on there and yet I had someone subscribe to it and thank you very much dear one I had to do a little because uh, now I have seven subscribers I have no idea how that happened <laughs> it's okay I have some weird stuff on my YouTube channel just just gotta tell you because I, I have rather eclectic tastes when it comes to brain food and I'm not afraid to check something out give it a little taste and if I don't care for it well then I don't finish watching it or if I do care for it but I don't have time then I stick it in one of my little categories off to the side the only problem with all of that is that somebody you know with all my little video breadcrumbs that I have somebody keeps coming along and cleaning up after me and I really wish they would stop that you know cuz I clean up after myself I really do I, I don't like leaving a mess um, unless I intend to leave a mess you know and you know it's kinda like my mother says if my words cut you I intended for you to bleed I got that from my mother but <clears throat> moving along somebody is cleaning up after me over there on YouTube and deleting some of the videos and deleting some of the channels that I followed and I really wish they would quit doing that I mean if I want to clean up my my list I will do so myself stop deleting the videos and the channels that I'm following or subscribing to you Captain Assholio that's just not right if I wanted your help I'd ask for it okay other than that I do it myself Huh. Um. Oh my lord. Ha <laughs> ha. Here's a tweet over here on Twitter before I get to my my article from lovely Lisa B. Um. Deep. It's from Deep State Exposed, and it said, "Why did the founding fathers and the and the eliches? I hate to say that other word, so I'll just say eliches of the day wear stockings. You know, the tight ballerina pants, wigs, and makeup. And if you said because that was the fashion of the day, think again. Oh man, I don't know that I really want to know. <laughs> That's just kind of scary. Kind of scary. Oh well. Moving along. Um, channel name, please. Which channel are you talking about? Oh, my channel name on on fake or on tw on yeah on YouTube is just Grammy. I think that's what it is. I think. <laughs> Let me look. Stop. Stop. No. Oh, that's an in the matrix one. Yeah. Thank you, in the matrix. Um. Let me see. Yeah, it's just Grammy. That's my channel. I got all kind of weird shit on there. From music to get to know to how to to all kind of weird stuff over there. In any case, let's see. Now, back to... Hi, Nature Nerd over here on Minds. Thank you, hon. Back to my article from the lovely Lisa B. This is from the elephantjournal.com or elephantjournal.com. And, uh, you know, just kind of sort of to give you guys a heads up. <clears throat> I'm not sorry that I'm too much to handle. And, you know, if I were to apologize for something that I was not sorry about, then I would be lying. So, no, I'm not sorry that I'm too much to handle for some. <laughs> 
yeah, I'm not sorry if you think that I'm too much either. If you think that I'm too intense or too crazy, untamed and wild. I'm not sorry that these gypsy bones were birthed, unwrapped boxes, freed from the boring ribbon of perfection. So here's the deal. I'm not sorry. Not one single bit. I'm not sorry for laughing too loud and for spitting on the ground, for being aggressive and dropping F-bombs. I'm not sorry for telling you what I need, hands waving, here I am. I'm not sorry for talking all night about feelings so we wake up a little sleepy, but free from the nightmare of resentment. I'm not sorry for emotional roller coasters because I never asked you to save me. So did you forget? you choose this madness and I'm not mad either you fell into these precious eyes dripping with starry wonder spinning circles of seduction until we're both drunk with oh my god passionate love wow I Lisa B I hadn't read this until now it's like wow did I really want to go here <laughs> It goes on to say, I told you I was a hurricane, but you just laughed. Aw, isn't she cute? You know, that's why they're called hurricanes and not hemicanes. Just saying. Now, I'm not sorry you became addicted to this, ooh, wow, sweet smell of my skin. <laughs> Hi, Rascal. Rascal's trying to help. I'm not sorry that you caught got caught in my web of enchantment because I'm not a spider and you're not a fly. We are human beings with choices. You always had the power to say no. I'm not sorry for my rage when you tell me to smile or stare at my ass like choosing prime rib from a butcher. Yeah, please do not tell me to smile when I got shit flying at me. Because the smile that you get may not be a pretty one will not include the rest of the facial muscles, to say in. I'm not sorry for crying when I'm sad or happy or angry or just because it feels good. Because, you know, vulnerability is our superpower. I'm not sorry I outplayed a player because I was never trying to win the game. In fact, I was not playing a game at all. And I'm not sorry for holding my size or my signs high, middle finger pointed at the authority that told us to shut up. Soft talker, stay pretty, in your lane of giggles and Barbie doll lies? No, that's not me. I'm not sorry I chose to splatter paint instead of blending nice colors between conventional lines. And I'm not sorry for my endless questions, wrapping uncomfortable mystery around everything you swore to be certain. I'm not sorry that I love death, talk to trees, read in graveyards, and snuggle with darkness, yours and my own. I'm not sorry that I love myself enough to stop apologizing for no goddamn reason and for all the little girls and grown women who were taught that they should be sorry it's time to stop the madness you are the one that the world has been waiting for rising from ashes to go light shit up with a love brave enough to welcome demons around the table because everyone's hungry and needs to be heard. We are not sorry for existing. Never again will we dim our blazing shine. And we are n only sorry that we ever said we were sorry. Yeah. Now I do feel bad for people that just plain can't handle the truth. I really do. But, and I feel bad for people that, you know, are just so enamored with their cognit cognitive dissonance. And, you know, I also feel bad for people that go, you know, their, their minds are so open that they let everything fall in and yet nothing fall out. <laughs> I, I can be a little bit too hot to handle from time to time, Grimmy. That is true. Rascal, honey, 
please. She's grabbing the microphone and it's like, will you stop it, you little stink pot? Rascal. See, she's she has earned that name. My God, can you hear that? <laughs> That is not any kind of interference <laughs> radio-wise. That is um, my cat purring. <laughs> Her's a happy little girl. Her's a happy girl, but her wants a microphone and she can't have it. Silly thing. Okay, so, yeah, don't be sorry for something that you're not sorry for, peeps. Be unapologetic with whatever you do, because you know what? If you went forth and did it, then, uh, yeah, there must have been a reason behind it somewhere. So, just saying. And, you know, if what you did wound up being a mistake at the time, well, then own up to it and move along. It's really pretty that simple. Pretty that simple? Simply or that just that simple yeah let's just spit that out shall we it really is I mean own up to your mistakes and then move along and if people keep bringing them up just look them straight in the face and say excuse me I've moved along I've cleaned up my mess why do you keep dwelling there you've got yourself anchored to a spot that I left a long time ago keep moving hon keep moving Okay, now, in honor of, I just got to do this because this is, you know, tis the season, and I know Grimmy just really does not like Christmas music. <laughs> Sorry, hun. Actually, I'm not. <laughs> but um, I did not realize this until yesterday when um, I was reading an article about um, Jennifer Sella, is that how you say her last name, that uh, sings uh, Christmas Canon Rock. Man, that woman's got a voice. Holy mackinoli. But I was reading an article about her, and she had said something about she really missed Paul O'Neill. And I was like, what? What? Because I've had the privilege of going to see Trans-Siberian Orchestra in concert, and they are absolutely amazing. Of course, it helped that my granddaughter was three at the time, and she sat on my lap the whole time, and so I got the... I got my perspective and the perspective of a three-year-old and all of the awe and the wonder. So that, that moment will be in my mind forever, or I sure as heck hope it will be. But um, this is from Rolling Stone. Trans-Siberian Orchestra founder Paul O'Neill dead at 61. And, uh, and underneath that it says, Producer and songwriter had been suffering from quote-unquote chronic illness. Where have we heard that before? Prince? David Bowie? Who else? Hmm? Ah, but wait, there's more. There's an update here. A Florida medical examiner reported that the Trans-Siberian Orchestra founder, Paul O'Neill, died from an accidental drug overdose. Yeah, the Hillsborough County Medical Examiner wrote in the autopsy report that O'Neill had methadone, codeine, diazepam, and antihistamine in his system when he died. On April 5th in Tampa, Florida, the producer who put together Christmas-inspired prog metal group Trans-Siberian Orchestra died at age 61. And the the group's Facebook page reported this news, saying that O'Neill had suffered from a chronic illness. Hmm. From the entire Trans-Siberian Orchestra family, past and present, it is heartbroken to share the devastating news that Paul O'Neill has passed away from chronic illness. Our friend and our leader, a truly creative spirit and altruistic soul, this is a profound and incredible loss for us all, which, yes, I think it is. That's enough, sweetheart. Your claws hurt. Um, O'Neill co-wrote Christmas Eve Sarajevo, which combined the Yuletide staples of God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen and Carol of the Bells with um, John Oliva, the keyboardist and sometime lead singer for the band sta um, for the metal band Savatage, and uh, for that band wrote that for that band's 1995 album Dead Winter Dead. 
Wanting to expand his vision on that song, he assembled Trans-Siberian Orchestra with Oliva and Sabotage um, guitarist Al Petrelli and keyboardist Robert Kinkle. And they put out the album Christmas Eve and Other Stories and released the song as a single, which it is an awesome song, I think. But, I, you know, Trans-Siberian Orchestra brought, to me, brought Christmas music to a whole other level. And although I don't be live in the whole Christmas story as we have been told anymore, that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy the music. So apparently this song has been certified gold and made appearances on Billboard's rock and adult contemporary charts in 1996, 1998, 2002, and 2004. And it, I think it was in 2004 that I actually saw, for the first time, saw that. And it was, a, it was the music background to someone had done a light display with their house on YouTube. And I was like, whoa, I love this music. Who does this? I mean, the video was cool anyway, It was, and I watched it last night. Showed my farmer. He'd never seen anything like that before because, you know, he's a farmer. He don't do that stuff. So, <laughs> bless his heart. He's, he's getting his um, mental <clears throat> exercise around me. That's for damn sure. <laughs> bless his heart. But he's, yeah, he's willing to listen and and actually discuss a lot of things so that's a plus on his side now to go on with this the album was subsequently certified three times platinum and the group has issued five other lps uh, for those of you that don't know that's an album it is an actual record um and scoring another multi-platinum release with 2004's The Lost Christmas Eve and top 10 releases with 2009's Night Castle and their most recent album, which is 2015's Letters from the Labyrinth, which I don't have that one. I may have to get that. Now, the group regularly embarked on winter tours during the U.S., staging over the top arena shows with lasers and fire displays. And let me tell you, that was one of those things when my granddaughter, when they had the fire shooting up from behind the drummer, she, I heard her go, <gasps> and then she turned it look and looked at me and said, danger, Grammy, danger. And it was like, it's okay, sweetheart. It's okay. You just stay here. Grammy's got you. It's all good. Now, to carry on with this, Blabbermouth reports that last year, which is 2016, Trans-Siberian Orchestra sold more than 927,000 tickets, grossing more than 56,000 or 56.9 million dollars, and Billboard ranked them number 25 on the list of top touring artists in the decade in 2009. And they regularly donated portions of their earnings to various charities. And from what I understand, Paul O'Neill was really good at um, helping to keep music programs in school. So bless his heart on that one, too. Now, O'Neill explained the influences that led him to his vision for Trans-Siberian Orchestra in an interview with The Morning Call and uh, the effects heavy concert production was always part of the vision and the mixing classical with rock, which I obviously got from bands like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, he said, and the rock opera aspect, which I love because it gives a third dimension, which I plagiarized from The Who. So, he began his music industry career as a personal assistant to manager David Krebs at Lieber Krebs, a management company that worked with Aerosmith, ACDC, and others. And he promoted tours in Japan and co-produced Aerosmith's two, classic live, um, two classics live volumes in the mid-80s. Now, around that time, he forged a relationship with uh, Savatage, is that how you say that? And a dramatic power metal band from Tarpon Springs, Florida, producing their 1987 LP, Hall of the Mountain King. And each of their subsequent releases through the uh, 2001's Poets and Madmen. He also produced albums by Badlands, Heaven, and Metal Church. In Trans-Siberian's or Trans-Siberian Orchestra's announcement of O'Neill's death, they asked for fans to respect the privacy of the family. Wow. 
I didn't think it would hit me like that, but wow, all of a sudden it just went, whoo. But, <clears throat> and there are several attachments here, video attachments, like uh, Mad Russian Christmas and actually the light show with Wizards of Winter, which was another one that I showed um, my farmer and uh, Christmas Canon. So, yeah, you will be missed, my dear. That was just, that was really a shocker. I guess I just did not see that in the news when it came out. So, yeah, I was like, what? That's just not cool at all. Oh, well. Oh, yay. Awesome, Beetle. Awesome. Okay. Marshall had a dinner in his honor. That's just pretty cool. Okay, let me see here. <laughs> Meister Brower, you're such a goof. Part of why I love you. He is a silly man. Okay, let me put this over here on Freedom's Network as well, because, yeah. One must honor the accomplishments of of others, I think. And that really was pretty transformative for me. <laughs> Trans-Siberian. Um... Just because it broadened my horizons to not... It's weird how dominoes fall, you know, and little breadcrumbs that start. Because I started listening to, to Trans-Siberian Orchestra and then different things started coming into play. And my horizons started broadening musically. And then with information that I was wanting to take in and stuff. So, you know, it's, it's always a one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. And bust your heart, hon, for being a key part in... Uh, my journey. Thank you. And may you continue to be rocking out in paradise, dear one, with the light shows and everything. So, I had to do that. Just had to. Okay, let me see what's going on over here on Twitter. I have a notification. So, Mike M. Who is Mike M.? Mike Hem is the White House Chief of Staff. Who is that? Trumple Stillskin just posted that. I have no idea. Um, oh, hey. <laughs> From Mark Wahlberg. A lot of celebrities shouldn't talk politics. They're pretty out of touch with the common person. The everyday guy out there providing for their family. Yeah, that's true, Mark. That's true. And yet... Hey, let them go ahead. I open my mouth and insert foot quite often as well. So, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Let's see. Okay, moving along. Did I say, I didn't say hey to everybody over here on the red pill. Uh, hi, Apostle. Hi, Beth Z. Hi, Echelon. Hi, F. Canella. Hi, K.D. Troxel and Soily. Didn't want to forget you guys. Okay. Now, moving along. Let me go back to my pocket. Now that I've gotten my... Wow, I just really was not expecting that sadness to just kind of jump in there and say, Hey, you're going to be. So, um... I don't remember who... I don't remember if I saw this from the Honeybee over on Twitter or if Java Doctor shared this to me over on realliberty.org. Um, it's from Health Impact News. Oh, I think it was Honeybee over on uh, Twitter. Do you know these hidden chemicals in common foods? Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm bouncing around tonight. It's like my mind is just... I'm, I'm in a mental amusement park and I'm choosing different rides, if you will. So... <laughs> Kind of doing a bouncy, bouncy. So, this loophole allows chemicals to hide in your food. This is dated today, actually. It's from Michael Sikora. Now, we often see artificial or natural flavors listed among the ingredients on food we buy. But do consumers know what these terms mean? 
<laughs> no, because you know what? If they're saying natural vanilla flavor, what, uh, Google natural vanilla flavor that is not from vanilla beans. Just Google that, okay? I'm not going to wait for you. You can find out on your own. You won't like it. Trust me. Recently, the FDA announced that a group of six artificial flavors would no longer be permitted to be used as food additives. And they are uh, synthetically derived uh, benzophenone, ethyl acrylate, methyl eugenol, is that how you say that? Um, myrcene, pulgon, and pyridine. Man. If I were to see that kind of stuff on the label, I would put it back up on the shelf anyway. Just saying. So, if you've never heard of these, you're not alone. Because most Americans are completely unaware of the additives put into their food because the food industry does not need to list the chemicals that they use and the ingredients. Instead, the federal government allows these chemicals to be obscured by being listed as artificial flavors or natural flavors. And it's time to stop letting big food and their crony capitalist friends get away with hiding the content of their products and require them to list the chemicals they use in our food. Now, artificial flavors are flavors that have been derived from sources other than plants or animals. They are synthetic compounds made in a lab from any of thousands of different chemicals used to make flavors. Companies often flavor artificial or often favor artificial flavors because they're cheaper to produce than natural flavors. It's impossible to know then just how many chemicals are in a food that lists quote unquote artificial flavors in its ingredients. It could be two or it could be 20. Now, despite the vast number of chemicals used in food and labeled as artificial flavors, the government has done very little to ensure that they are safe, kind of like vaccines. You know, vaccines have their own little, they don't have to go through the stringent testing, although it's not so stringent anymore, of coming out from Big Pharma because they're a vaccine. And do you ever stop to think that that crap that's in there gets injected directly to the bloodstream so it goes directly to all of your vital organs as opposed to taking something orally which goes through the filtration process of the intestines, the stomach and the intestines, which does filter out an awful lot of it. Not all, but a lot of it. Yeah. Vaccines are bad, just like this crap. Okay, there's, there's my little public info insert. Back to this article. Now, um... The reason that the government has done very little is because food companies can deem their own products to be generally recognized as safe or grass. <laughs> it's generally recognized as safe. We asked each other and we said, hmm, I won't eat it, but I'm sure give it to Mikey. Mikey likes it. Mikey will eat anything. We're all Mikey, by the way. <clears throat> Yeah, and this is without any formal review by the FDA, the Fraud and Death Association. Oh, I mean, Food and Drug Administration. Now, the grass process has essentially turned into a loophole for food companies to declare all kinds of chemicals as safe to add to our food with little oversight. The FDA seems fine with taking Big Food's word for it, probably because they're getting some little action under the table, don't you know? Now, the above-mentioned chemicals that are now banned were found to cause cancer in animal studies. Uh, psst, just to let you know, humans are mammals, a.k.a. animals. <laughs> How's that for a twist? Animal studies. Yeah. And the FDA needed to be sued by grassroots environmental activist groups to remove them from the food supply. So in other words, if people hadn't threatened legal action and then followed through with it, the FDA would have just kept going down its merry way, going la-di-da-di-da-di-da. -di -da -di -da. Fewer people to bitch at us. 
La-di-da-di-da. Uh-huh. Now, of the thousands of other chemicals being added to our food, how many more pose a risk to human life? Allowing big food to only mention artificial flavors rather than list the chemical names of the additives that they use only benefits food manufacturers because they know that consumers would be turned off if they knew their flavor or their favorite iced tea had seven chemicals that they couldn't pronounce in the ingredients. Now the term artificial flavors is similar to the new GMO label in development that depicts a sun with a smiley face and says B for bioengineered rather than GMO. Isn't that just wonderful? They're taking stuff of people saying be the change or be responsible and they are incorporating that. You know, kind of like... um. Oh, the Catholic Church, early Catholic Church, started incorporating pagan symbols and rituals into the Catholic Church to get those sheep into the fold. B for bioengineered. Isn't that wonderful? In both cases, the government is helping the food industry sanitize its products to make them more attractive to consumers. Once again... Our crony capitalist government takes the side of industry rather than ordinary consumers. Hmm, keep that up and you're not going to have very many consumers. Just saying, then where is your profit margin going to be? Look beyond the initial bottom line. <clears throat> natural flavors should also be listed on food packaging. And according to the FDA, natural flavors are flavors isolated from plant or animal sources. Like that natural flavoring that they use for vanilla. <laughs> yeah, like artificial flavors, natural flavors are ubiquitous in our food supply. One report found out that uh, only water, salt, and sugar appear on food labels more often than natural flavors. And you may think that natural flavors are better, since they're derived from natural sources. <laughs> but experts say, you know, those drips under pressure, former drips under pressure, that the source of the flavoring has no bearing on how healthy or safe it is. Really? Really? Yeah, you eat it. <laughs> For example, traces of cyanide can be found in natural almond flavor. Raw soybeans used to make soy sauce can also be toxic. Some natural vanilla flavors, here we go, are you ready for it? <clears throat> Let's say this again. Some natural vanilla flavor is synthesized from, wait for it, the anal glands of beavers. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> Now, the point is that consumers have a right to know what chemicals are in their food that they buy, and um, so informed decisions can be made about what is okay and what should be avoided. The solution is simple. Food companies should be required to list all of the chemicals used to flavor our food because it can be difficult to distinguish the chemical names of natural and artificial flavors. Food labels can simply list out the natural flavors under the heading and or under that heading and artificial flavors under their own heading. Oh, but the added expense and the labels and the printing would be so small, nobody would be able to read them. See, that's why people just need to stop. If you see something that says artificial or natural flavors, put it back on the shelf. Seriously, you hit them in the pocketbook and they'll notice. Now, consumers could make their own informed decisions about what they are comfortable eating. Also, you know, if you believe it would help, <clears throat> be live, it would help, tell Congress and the FDA to mandate that artificial and natural flavors be listed on food labels. Mm, I don't know that I want to contact either one of those groups. Just I will just vote with my pocketbook and I'll say, mm, it says natural flavors. It says 
artificial flavors. I say, no, thank you. It really is, it makes life a little bit more difficult when it comes to meal preparation sometimes, but your meal preparation will be ever so much tastier for the most part, and it will be better for you. You never did find it, Vinny, huh? Sorry, hon. Who is that? Um, oh, Mick, uh, Mick Mulvaney, Director of Office Management. Ah, well, that sounds like one, lots of fun. Hmm, thanks, Graham. Okay, let me put this over here on the effing site as well. Hick, burp, cha-cha-cha. What sounds good for supper? I can't decide. I can't decide. And I really... Mm, I may have to do breakfast for supper. I have some farm fresh eggs. I think I'll do that. I think I'll do breakfast for supper. Sounds yummy to me. Okay. So, moving along. Um, yeah, we'll do that one and we'll do that one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What's that? Anal. <laughs> yeah, Meister Brown. Anal glands. It's what's for dinner. Here, have Mikey try it. Mikey will eat anything. <laughs> How about you give it to Mick? You know, the new guy over in the White House. Let him try it. There you go. There's an idea. All of these people that are supposed to be overseers for us, you know, and, and making sure that things are safe. How about they be the human test subjects? You know, before something gets allowed to be put into the consumer's uh, food chain, if you will. Um, <laughs> that's right, Meister Brower. Before they allow something to go out to the public, whether it be uh, medication or vaccines, same thing, only different. Well, one's most of the time an oral poison, whereas the other one is an injectable form. Or, you know, the lovely... <laughs> Meister Brown. <laughs> Var varmint bungholio. <laughs> bungholio. That's a good one, hon. <laughs> In any case, moving along. Damn it. <laughs> that is a good one, though, Meister Brown. <laughs> um, before anything gets released to the market for human consumption, how about we start making all of those people that work in those governmental entities... You know, the ones that are supposed to be making the decisions that it's safe for human consumption. How about they be the guinea pigs? How's that sound? That sounds like a hell of a reorganization to me. I may actually have to tell POTUS that one. Just say, I got an idea for you. Before any of those gov government watchdog agencies, you know, like the FDA and CDC and all of them other ones, um, before they de deem something as safe for human consumption, how about they be the guinea pigs? They be the test subjects. You know, because that's, that's what they make the big bucks for, right? Right. Sounds good to me. Part of the reason why I don't want to be. I don't want to. I don't want to. You can't make me. Okay, moving along. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness <clears throat> uh where was i at there we go yeah i think that was honeybee thank you honeybee now here is one that i also saw on twitter earlier today that uh i don't know i mean if you have eye issues you may wish to check it out it does look interesting and it's not like it's something that you have to actually put in your eyes it's from worldtruth.tv it's a natural remedy for cleaning your eyes and improving vision in only three months and i may actually i mean if i can find the ingredients i may actually give it a try just you know just 
to let y'all know because it's one of those things where I don't believe in telling you go out and do this unless I've tried it myself. So <clears throat> your vision is very important to you and that's why you need to read this article. Many people often neglect this problem until it's too late. And at this point, you need to know that you must take care of your vision and do everything to protect it. Also, blueberries are very good for vision. They're high in resveratrol, which is a, a vitamin that's or a nutrient that's, that's really good for eye health. I, even my eye doctor told me that one. So, at this point, you need to know that you must take good care of your vision and do everything to protect it. In the pharmacies, you can find many different remedies and eye drops that can treat your eye problem and improve your eyesight. Yeah, they treat you, but they keep you coming back for more. However, you need to know that these remedies can be very harmful if you use them uncontrollably. As in, I need my eye drops. And this is mainly due to their harmful components. So, if you're using these remedies and you want to avoid having surgeries, then you're on the right place. Because here is an article that will show you this effective and most importantly, completely natural recipe, not, not anal gland juice, but uh, that will improve your vision and will protect your eyes. It's raspberry and roses. Now, not roses that have, you've just fertilized with organic fertilizer. <laughs> First, you must know that if you want to improve your vision, you need to consume um, vitamin A every day in order to improve the health of your eyes. Not consuming enough vitamin A will lead to the appearance of a condition called cataracts. Now, vitamin A and resveratrol, yes, are both very important for your eye health. And if you want to improve and straighten or straighten your vision, you need to consume blueberries. See, there you go. Namely, blue, uh, blueberries can help you strengthen the veins and blood vessels that end up protecting the retina. Also, for improving your eyesight, you can use uh, euphrasia drops, and these drops can help you improve your eyes internally. And there is a link here to an article. Um, okay. Oop. Nope. Here in this article, we'll show you an amazing recipe that will help you improve the health of your eyes. And the best thing about this remedy is that it's very easy to prepare. So, you need four cups of boiling water four teaspoons of raspberry leaves, and one cup of rose petals. That's it. So preparing this amazing remedy, first you need all, or let all of the ingredients stay in the boiling water for a few minutes. Now you need to let the mixture cool. Very key. Once the mixture is cooled, you need to strain it and use this mixture to wash your eyes every day. This mixture will improve your eyesight in only three months. Now at this point, you need to know that this recipe will improve the health of your eyes and it will also protect them even, even furthermore. And the rose water will also improve your overall health. Finally, you must also know that in order to have a healthy body, you must constantly care about all of your senses, all of them, including your mental sense. So, I am going to have to try that. I don't want to get roses from, um, from like the florist, because God knows what they put on those. But, my Uncle Tommy does, um, he has roses at his house and I know he doesn't spray them or anything like that so when his roses get in bloom I may just have to go over and and snip a few so that I can make me it's gonna be next spring but cigarettes cigars and roses ah there you go Meister Brow um you know couldn't wait couldn't wait I, you know, I see all this stuff about, oh, here, buy some all-natural rose water, or get this, or get that, and it's like, uh, uh, no, no, not interested. <laughs> I do, I do have some rose oil, which I wonder if I were to, uh, put that underneath 
you know, the little ridge like right along the top of the cheekbone. If I were to put rose oil, I wonder how that would work. Hmm, you know, like dilute it down in some coconut oil so I get the little moisturizing around those funny little smile lines around my eyes. That's what I'm calling them. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. But, hey, you never know. Never. I may just have to do that. I do have, there you go. And, and if it's Woiken, well, even if it's not Woiken, I'll report back if I remember. <laughs> okay. We'll just do the little heart eyes guy because he's, that's the one to help your eyes. Okay. Back to my pocket I go. Hi ho, hi ho. It's back to the pocket I go. I have an awful lot of stuff. You know, like breaking Hillary Clinton responds to court order by filing new email answers, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Um, how the IRS was gutted. Oh, darn. Can we have a collective sigh? Ah, oh, I feel so bad. Not. Not. I have stuff about the Pesur family. I have stuff. About, I need to delete that that sugar one because I've already read it. Um, oh, let's see. Here we go. Here we go. From all that's interesting, we need to. Yeah. This is sadly going on in entirely too many, too many school districts <sighs> because you're being schooled don't you know i i would hate to have my schooling interfere with my education that's one of those mark twain kind of i you know tweaked it a wee bit but thank you mark twain for that one okay this is from all that's interesting dot com a florida teacher diane Tirado was fired for giving zeros to students that failed to hand in their work. It's absurd to give someone something for nothing, and to do that is creating a future that is pretty darn bleak. She looks an awful lot like my sister-in-law, who is a librarian in the school district. And she has, oh lord, yeah, school district keeps saying that they need to have all of this money. We need more money for the children. It's for the children. What they don't tell you is most of that gets eaten up in administrative costs because a lot of the teachers have to provide a lot, a lot of like the paper, the Kleenexes, the pencils, the, a lot of the stuff that they, the materials that they need. That was the word I was looking for. So yeah, every time your school says we need more money, tell them no, you don't. Cut back on your administrative spending. You got entirely too many chiefs and not enough Indians. So, Diane was fired from her school after giving students zeros for not handing in homework. Now, this was in the great state of Florida. And uh, she's gone on the offensive against her former school after she claimed to have been fired for doling out zero grades to students who failed to hand in their homework. Now, this social studies teacher was fired from the West K-8 through school in Port St. Lucie. Luci? How do you say that? In South Florida, after she'd been working there, or working there for just two months. Hmm. Apparently, the school employees, or the school employs, a zero, no zero policy that Terado is said to have violated after the group, a group of students failed to hand in one of the, their first major assignments of the school year. This resulted in her forced departure. The assignment that ended her career called for the students to keep an explorer's notebook for two weeks in the same way that a 15th century explorer might have kept a journal in their time. Now she claims that parents complained to her over the workloads that their kids received and criticized the teacher of 17 years for giving the 8th graders too much to handle. Wow, keeping a journal is too... Now, for me, it would be too much to handle because, yeah, I have... Tr I can't... My mother, on the other hand, she writes down every day. Every day. Sometimes she wanders along and just jots down a little something. Sometimes she waits till the end of the day to just write a whole page. But she writes every day in her journal. So, there you go. 
Apparently, she got called into the principal's office because parents were not happy with her. And it was ruining my life for weeks, she said in an interview. She also said that during this meeting, the principal informed her of the alleged no-zero policy. And I was not allowed to give anything lower than a 50. Wow, so you get half of the credit. Even you, Apparently, that's just because you showed up and you were breathing. Well, you get half the credit just because you showed up. You know, that's the problem, people. We keep lowering the expectations, and the gene pool just keeps getting muddier and muddier. Mm. Now, after a group of students from her class didn't hand in any work at all, she felt that she, they didn't deserve any credit at all, let alone 50%, and so handed them zero grades. I get that. I get that. You know, if you're going to have... If you're going to tell the kids, this is what I expect, and then they don't deal with the repercussions of their actions by not meeting what you expect in a situation like this, they deserved it. I don't have a problem with that. There's a lot of things in schooling that I have problems with, but when you got teachers that are just asking you to just document for two weeks, you know, in a little journal, put down your frickin' cell phone and document. No, Snapchat's way too fun. <clears throat> she goes on to say, I'm used to kids not handing in work, but then uh, chasing them until the report card, okay, but then chasing them until the report cards are in to make sure that they make it up with extra credit. But I don't give a grade for nothing. She was fired on September 14th, and the principal's letter of termination reportedly mentioned no official cause for her dismissal. Now, the teacher says that this is because she was working under the probationary period at the time she was fired, which doesn't require that an explicit reason be stated. Mm. But she believes that it was the zero grades that caused her firing. I refused to do their policy. I guess you would call that defiance, she said. And I've been fired for refusing to give you a 50% for not handing in anything. Huh. The school, however, said that their alleged no-zero policy doesn't exist. Ah, well, apparently it's not in writing. Or maybe it is. There is no district or individual school policy prohibiting teachers from recording a grade of zero for work not turned in, the school spokesman reported. But, Toronto says that the uh, policy is clearly outlined in the school's Westgate Student and Parent Handbook. An image that she shared with the Post states in bright red capital letters. You're not supposed to use red because <laughs> it hurts. You're supposed to use purple or some other color that's not quite so offensive. And yet they use that. Oh, and in this image, it is with lots of little asterisks leading into it. No zeros. Lowest possible grade is 50%. Hmm. Now, this school alleged this school's alleged no zero policy is an example of one of the latest parenting trends known as participation trophy, which claims that rewarding kids for mere participation will boost their self esteem. Okay, now as someone that has coached T ball and slow pitch, uh, softball. Um, and dealt with, uh, done Girl Scouts with my kids and all that other fun stuff. I get the whole concept of thank you for showing up and act being active, actively participating in what we've got going on. But that's all you need is the thank you, the pat on the back. You don't need a freaking trophy for it. Number one, I don't like dusting and so too many trophies. But... <laughs> Yeah. Kids get a boost from self-esteem because they actually accomplish something. When you tell them, hey, I saw what you just did there. Good job. That's a boost to their self-esteem. These participation trophies, that's just another mm-bleh. Mm 
Yeah, now those that support participation trophies believe that eliminating the possibility of a loser gives all kinds of recognition required to improve their confidence. You know, sometimes you just plain ain't up to par. And that needs to be recognized. It really does. Kids need to have the recognition that sometimes when they are participating, they are not given it their all. And you need to also recognize that as well. So giving them a little trophy because they sat there in the middle of the outfield and picked dandelions or chased butterflies. When they come in, when the game is over, you tell everybody, thank you for your teamwork. Good job. But you know what? Uh, you probably you ought to pay a little bit closer attention. I know you're way out there in the outfield and not too many balls come to you, but everybody has to, of course, you know, when I coach T-ball, everybody got a chance at every position in the game. That way they understood the concept because that's what that, that level is for, is teaching the rudimentary skills and rules of the game. So everybody got a chance to play every different position on the field. And I had one little kid, one little kid that seemed to think that he always had to play first base. And the third time that he went running over there from whatever position he was playing and pushed the thir first baseman out of the way, I benched him. And I got yelled at by parents. And I looked at him and said, he needs to learn the rules just like everyone else. And he also needs to learn good sportsmanship. And if he cannot do that, I don't want him on my team. And you know, I didn't get asked to coach after that. Because <laughs> he, was, he was someone with the proper last name. So, yeah. But I stood my ground. I wasn't going to put up with that crap. It's bullshit. Everybody learns the rules. And good sportsmanship. You either play nice or you don't play. It's that simple. If you're going to be a sore loser, go sit on the bench and cry by yourself. I don't want to deal with you. So, to carry on with this. Now, critics of this style, uh, style of child rearing say that this hinders children from reaching their ultimate abilities by eliminating the concept of a loser in academics and other activities. I kind of sort of agree with that. I don't like the whole loser thing, but yeah, you're not performing up to your capabilities. I know you're not. You're better than that. I'd prefer that way of... That's just me personal. Now, Tirado is one such critic. She believes that it's absurd to give someone something for nothing. And to do that is creating a future that is pretty darn bleak. We're creating monsters out of our children, she added. And we have a nation of kids that are expecting to get paid and live their life just for showing up. And it's not real. People that experience that kind of childhood, then you're entitled for the rest of your life. And people, you need to stop and realize when we are old and crotchety. Okay, when the rest of you are old and crotchety. <laughs> those are going to be the ones that are supposedly taking care of us and running things. Really? Is that what you want running things? Think about it. So, there's also another interesting link at the bottom of this, but I'm not going to go to it. Just, just not going to go there. So, and yes, banana seats suck, beetle. <laughs> Okay. Oh, and Rob Works fired up the bubbler. Thank you ever so much, Rob Works. You're so awesome. Okay, let me put this over here on the FN site as well. So, yeah, I... <sighs> people, 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 you need to stop and realize the, the ramifications of your decisions. So, moving along. Uh, what time is it? I got time. I got time. Find one more before I go check out PIGazette.com. Um, 
I think I'm actually going to check out the recommended in my pocket because sometimes it comes up with some really, really, oh good lord. Okay, I'm not going here, but if y'all want to check it out, Millennials in China are using nudes to secure loans. That's from Vice.com. I ain't going there because I just ain't going there, but wow. Really? People are really stooping that low? Wow. Um, let's see. Ooh, Saudi Arabia declares war on America's Muslim congresswoman. Uh-oh, that's from pol foreignpolicy.com. Um, let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Um, ooh, Ancient Origins of Automation from Gizmodo. I don't like Gizmodo, though. They irritate me. Um... Okay, from Mashable. I mm, Should I go there? Should I go there? I'm going to. I clicked it. It's too late. I clicked it. Apparently, this person's 45-tweet rant about the imperial system is hilariously relatable. Really? So, if you've ever found yourself somewhat confused by the logic of the imperial system, you know, pounds, ounces all that good stuff, then you're not alone. Because unlike the more modern metric system, which is fairly logical when it comes to the way different measures and weights are broken down, the imperial system just seems a bit messier. Yeah. So, anyone who's ever found themselves struggling to follow a recipe that contains the phrase cup will understand. Okay, this has got to be someone from across the pond because I have trouble with the leaders, because <laughs> I'm used to the imperial system. Sorry. Anyway, here to perfectly encapsulate your confusion is this Scottish video games programmer who on Monday evening went on an epic 45-tweet rant about the issue. Now, this is from November 27th of this year. Um, it's from Moth Dad. Just learn there are 16 ounces in a pound, and I am effing livid. I'm not ready to say that yet. 16? What the heck kind of number is that? I have no reason to actually look into imperial measurements until now, and frankly, I immediately regret finding this out. It makes some sense, though, because a pound is defined as being 7,000 grams, so that makes each each ounce a nice round 437.5 grains that's round i don't think so and then oh my word oh my freaking actual god guess how many pounds there are in a stone you'll never get it it would be impossible uh to guess this i have no idea how much a stone is uh, there are 14 pounds in a stone hey i found that out now this is from Moth Dad. And you know what? It's completely different freaking... Mm, you know what? I'm just going to let this let you guys finish reading this because I'm like, dude, seriously? Wow. I had no idea what a stone was. No freaking clue. I hear of people that are passing a stone. <laughs> um, but yeah. Moving along, moving along. I'm just gonna. I'm sharing this. I'm. Sh it. It is somewhat amusing, but it's not nearly as amusing as I thought it would be. So you know, moving along. That's kind of the way I roll. In case you haven't noticed, I would think of other things to rant on about, but that's just me. Okay, there I go. That's what I get for going to Mashable. So, um. What? Why driving is hard. Why driving is hard. Adulting is hard, too. Um, oh, good Lord. What men need to know about sexist microaggressions. Are you kidding me? Oh. I think I'm going to. I'm going to go there. 
and then I'm going to go here and I'm going to do this and I'm going to see if maybe Mr. Damien has written anything new. The official Damien James website. Let's go check him out, shall we? Um, don't necessarily want this one. Let me scroll. Nope, 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 nope. How about I do this? I'll just backspace until I get to his home page. And oh, this may be a new one. Huh. Well, let's check it out. I like Damien James. So here we go. <clears throat> And it doesn't say when this one was posted. So, fake news, the deliberate lie that is unraveling the world. And that's more pervasive than you think. Ah, so it may be appropriate even though it's a little bit older. I don't know. Authors note the term fake news has become a famous slash infamous buzzword in the past two years as it's been used by everyone from Trumple Stillskin to the corporate lame ass propaganda system that still have their panties in a twist about the result of the 2016 selection. Yes, I did call that a selection. So... What do they mean when they call a source for a story fake news? Is it consistently applied? And how does it not fall victim to fake news stories? Well, this article will cover what fake news is, and unlike the half-baked bullshite articles put out by corporate lame-ass propaganda system organizations on how to, speak or how to spot fake news, which are laughably absurd, I'm going to cut through their crap and deliver a better set of guidelines in helping readers identify what's fact and feces as far as news is concerned. So, what is fake news? Well, that's going to depend on who you ask. On one of the mainstream media sites that try to help people identify fake news, they list mostly nonsensical giveaways like domain name and the about section, which is just completely phony. None of the major news or none of the major media news organizations give a detailed rundown of their entire staff and where they donate politically. They only list the past reporting credentials of their editors that sound professional but fail to disclose the most relevant aspects of their news views or the degree of their partisan alignment. Hell, even worse is that they only list the editors of their online stories and fail to explain that network executives are the ones who drive the direction of editorial staff who then drive the direction and phrasing of news stories delivered by reporters. WikiLeaks revealed that direct collusion between respected news sources and political candidates was a major issue in 2016 presidential campaign with CNN especially and Shrillery Clinton. Now probably the most honest of the online sources on fake news call articles that are hyper-partisan in tone and designed to make you angry. Fake news. Which means that nearly every news organization out there that's trying to take a dump in Trump's morning coffee with the constant hyperbolic denunciations of what he's doing in office that isn't significantly different from the actions of previous POTUSes is fake news. So by that definition, MSNBC, CNN, NBC, ABC, CBS, and let's not forget Fox are all fake news. Now, if that is indeed the case, then Trumples has been correct in calling them out for any number of stories that they've run in the past two years. 
in full disclosure, I don't much care for the guy. I think he's an arrogant, petulant, boisterous, self-worshipping boob who somehow bumbled, stumbled, and fell into the presidency. His only redeeming quality is he seems to correctly call things as they are, far more frequently than can be attributed to random chance. <laughs> wow, I like his full disclosure. And for the most part, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, and he does call him Donald Trump, whereas I call him Trumple Stilskin, but eh. So, while I do agree with the general premise of the USA Today criteria on fake news, I feel that it doesn't quite tell the whole story on fake news, which is, ironically, probably the best definition of fake news, that it doesn't tell the full story or the truth about an event and that it attempts to selectively generate public outrage for some public figures that engage in certain behaviors while sweeping the same situation under the rug for others. So, how does one spot fake news in a world that has mainstream news organizations attempting to whip you into a frenzy and manipulate you at every turn of the page and click of the channel? Well, I've come up with some guidelines as far as that's concerned. Guideline number one. Believe nothing that you read and maybe only half of what you see. <laughs> okay, I like that one. This one's pretty straightforward. People lie. They lie to themselves. They lie to their loved ones. They lie to strangers. They lie whenever it suits them. It's what people do. People also love drama, and they can say that they don't, but they're probably lying. And most people are gossiping high schoolers of any age, and they want to hear the juiciest rumor about people or, posi or positions that they don't like, and it doesn't matter if it's true or not, and if it's not true, all the more reason to just make something up. Russia! Now, news organizations know that you want to hear certain stories that reinforce your skewed view of the world. And that's why they only report certain stories or angles on NBC, MSNBC, CBS, etc., etc., etc. And why they only report certain stories or angles on Fox News. Media organizations are more in the business of manipulating people than actually reporting on the events of the day. It makes them boatloads of money, or as he put, buttloads of money, and they know that they'll segregate, um, you'll segregate yourselves out of the, to the correct network to indoctrinate yourselves based on your preconceived notions on the world. In that, and in other ways, media organizations suck. But that's what they do. Know that your media source is not telling you the full story or the full truth when they report on a topic because they gain more by twitching your puppet strings and manipulating you than letting you know what's really going on in the world. And you might be good, but... Probably not. You're probably still screwed. Guideline number two. Yes, I see some flashing going on over here. What? Okay. Adolf Hitler once said, the masses will... Okay, let me read guideline number two. Guideline number two is, if a story seems shocking or unbelievable, it probably is. Adolf Hitler once said, the masses will more easily believe a great lie than a little one. I think we all know how that turned out. History repeats itself because the masses never get smarter or better informed. Don't be the masses, because sometimes the M is silent. Now, if you hear a story that seems ridiculous, shocking, or unbelievable, don't be a lazy twit and just accept it. Do some research on the matter and look at multiple sources. Remember, above, where I mentioned that media machines are in the business of feeding you bullshite because they know you want to swallow it? Well, the same thing applies here. 
Stop biting on the juicy stories and swallowing the crap that they're feeding you until you've exhausted all the sources you can find. I have to admit, I have been guilty at that biting at the juicy sources. Did one tonight already. Hmm. Okay, I needed a sip. Guideline number three. When you're trying to research how truthful a story is, look for repetitious phrasing in the source to identify those who copy others' stories and establish which media organizations are working together. People in media are just as lazy as people who aren't in media. And if they can get away with simply copying someone else's news report and simply rewriting a few sections, they'll do it. What's most important to note in these situations are the words that are copied and pasted from one report to the next. Media narratives, aka propaganda, only work by repeating the same stance or story over and over. Media psychologists have shown that if you can repeat a story or a lie often enough to people, they will eventually believe and accept it, regardless of how true the story is. They also know that if the lie or story deviates too much with each new telling, people have a harder time keeping track of it and start questioning the story. That's why I say that you should look for the same phrasing showing up in different sources or news reports. These are typically political agendas that media organizations are trying to force you to accept as being true. They aren't that concerned with the generalities of the news story that they feed you so much as they are with you internalizing and accepting their talking points as true. Guideline number four, skip the Snopes and PolitiFact websites out there. Yeah, with the rise of fake news has come the rise of fact-checking websites. And to be fair, they used to be about checking the veracity of the claims of public figures. But with all endeavors that initially have quote-unquote good intentions, they gain the trust of the masses. Remember, once again, sometimes the M is silent and then turned into worthless piles of garbage run by political hacks who aren't interested in the truth. The majority of fact checker sites are persuaded, or I've, per excuse me, let me start this over again. The majority of fact checker sites I've perused lately don't list any facts or cite any source for their fact checking. Instead, they look to spin the particulars on the claim being made in such a way as to discredit them without really proving any hard evidence to the contrary, which pretty much ensures that they aren't going to ascertain the truth of the claim. So if you want proof, check out, and he's got a link here to an article and this Snopes fact-checked version of the same article. Notice the linguistic and interpretive gymnastics that are at work to debunk the claim. Snopes and other fact-checking sites don't bother citing any source for their debunkery. It's almost like they're entirely fabricated. Really? Well, really? Snopes fabricating things? No, say it ain't so. Now, these fact-checking sites have become more about helping to push a political narrative for their party than cutting through the collective crap and telling it like it is. And the feeling of their friends and political bros be damned. And the truth doesn't have an agenda. And it's just as cutting to one group as to another. The truth takes no sides. And yes... I know that this makes it harder to verify what's true in news by ditching these phony fact checker sites. It sucks more than a shop vac on high that there aren't sites out there that are truly dedicated to helping people make sense of what's really going on in the world that are truly nonpartisan. But that kind of crap gets expensive and I don't have the time, money, 
or a trustworthy research staff available to set something like that up. So, in other words, do your own fact-checking. Research. Question everything yourself. Guideline number five. Don't start off mentally rigid on what you think you know about a topic or story before all the information is in. What's actually true is largely a matter of likelihoods or probabilities. Initial reports have a low probability of getting the story completely right because not all the information has been gathered. Getting set in a metal rut of this breaking news story is 100% true and nothing anyone can say could possibly change how this story play out is more than likely going to make you look like a stupid ass when all the information comes in. I've resembled that a time or two myself. Part of the learning process. Now, this guideline might be the hardest to explain and the hardest to adopt, so I think an example would be easiest. Remember the Trayvon Martin case? How it initially blew up in the media? The story started off with poor little innocent black youth Trayvon Martin getting viciously gunned down in cold blood in an unprovoked attack by some white guy named George Zimmerman. Now, most of the dumbass public, as opposed to the regular public, lost it when the initial story came out because, well, damn, a name like George Zimmerman sounds like a white guy name, and everyone knows that all white people are inherently racist, and other races can't possibly be racist, so it was definitely another case of systemic racism and white-on-black crime. Add in how the media creatively edited Zimmerman's 911 call to make Zimmerman look super racist, with tolerance and understanding in his, as his kryptonite. And how the media refused to show the photographs of Zimmerman taken immediately after the attack in order to really push the whole innocent black teen angle and get a perfect storm of ignorance. Now, the social justice wormiers, yes, that's right, wormiers, and black supremacist uh, groups started organizing and chomping at the bit for justice. Was it justice or just us? What do they really want? Or to show solidarity with poor, oppressed Trayvon. These groups bit on the initial story and refused to wait for all the information. Idiots. But then, some previously missing information was made available to the public. First, the neighborhood where the whole altercation went down had several armed break-ins and burglaries in the weeks leading up to the shooting. Then it became known that the altercation took place at close to 3 a.m., while Zimmerman was performing a neighborhood watch sweep. Then it became known that Trayvon was behaving erratically and attacked Zimmerman first, and that Zimmerman shot Martin last. Then the audio and transcript of the full 911 call came out. Then it was revealed that Zimmerman was Hispanic and not white, and once a broader picture of the event had been painted, it suddenly wasn't a racially motivated hate crime for an older Hispanic homeowner to address a young black male who was wandering around and acting strange in a neighborhood that had been recently beset by crime at three in the morning, who then proceeded to physically attack said Hispanic man before getting shot. The same shite happened with Michael Brown in Ferguson. Dumbasses went all in on the initial reports of a white authority figure killing, killing an innocent, non-threatening young black male. Immediately leapt onto the outrage and started rioting and looting, I mean peaceful protesting phase. Then, once more, information came in about the attacks that corroborated the officer's story. These groups turned into spineless little chicken shits who started worming their way out of accepting that they were wrong in the first place with all manner of excuses. 
oh, it's just a conspiracy by the cops or white people or the mayor or systemic racism or, 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 or. Or it's just a conspiracy. Is it really a conspiracy if everyone knows about it? By the media that has an angle to run, that knows that they can manipulate you because you always respond with the same dumb knee-jerk reaction nonsense to these kind of stories. Maybe you're, you try getting all the facts before taking any action that would make yourselves look stupid on national television. Or you could just keep doubling down with increasingly convoluted conspiracy theories as to why you're always on the wrong side of a story. I don't care. It's not my reputation, people. Or cause that's being destroyed. Guideline number six. The more complex and convoluted a news story has to become in order to arrive at a final position, the less likely it is to be true. An additional point of consideration if the story uses the terms potentially, allegedly, probably, may have, or other terms that waffle on the strength of the event being true, especially if they used multiple times in the same article, it ain't news. It's known as conspiracy theorizing, propaganda, fake news, or horse crap. Now, the best way to explain this guideline is once again with an example. And the most compelling example of this happened in late 2016 when Shrillery lost the selection through her own incompetence. Not two days after the selection, Shrillery claimed that the media... Um, and the media helping to corroborate that she lost because of James Comey. When it didn't stick, they slash she made the claim that the Russians sabotaged her and aided Trump. Because WikiLeaks got their hands on countless emails from her campaign and the Democratic National Committee that showed just how corrupt she and the DNC were leading up to the selection. Now, prior to this election, and as the emails started being released, Shrillery and the DNC initially went into damage control, as the emails painted a very disgusting picture of what the DNC and Shrillery were doing behind the scenes in her campaign. So how did the corporate lame-ass propaganda media system report on the matter? That the emails may have been altered from the original text to give the wrong impression about her or them. Notice the waffling language. It's not an outright denial that the emails were original and unaltered, but it keeps or it helps to give the impression that the emails may not have been legitimate. WikiLeaks and other security specialists confirmed that they were originals and unaltered. But that meant largely unmen or that went largely unmentioned in the MSM, making the previous stories on the emails maybe being altered. Fake news. Didn't stop the big media companies from reporting as it as a possibility. Strange. I thought they cared about the integrity of the news. And then after that, the story switched to how it was the Russians who influenced the selection away from Shrillery by releasing said emails. Except WikiLeaks, Russia, and a number of security experts stated that Russia was not the source. That story was fake news because it wrongly attributed blame for Shrillery's loss towards something that was completely meaningless. Claiming something is the cause for an event when it's most assuredly isn't is lying and or inaccurate. Reporting lies or explanations for an event that are clearly incorrect is fake news. It didn't matter where the emails came from. What mattered was what was in them. The story became needlessly overcomplicated to explain why Shrillery lost. Russians didn't hack the voting booths to throw votes to Trumples, as numerous voting security experts clearly confirmed that it didn't occur. 
people simply voted against Shrillery because of the things that she had said and done in person and in print. Voters looked at her track record of scoring huge sums of money by selling influence in the U.S. federal government. They looked at the gross missteps she made in Benghazi and in the email server fiasco. They looked at the fact that she has no solid plan or answers on how to address issues like the spread of the Islamic State, the fundamentalist Islam-inspired terrorist attacks around the world, illegal immigration, law enforcement, human and drug trafficking within the U.S., the trade deficit, how to bring jobs back to America, or the tax code. That was the why of why she lost. That was why Trump won. That should have been the story. But no, we have to keep hearing about how since Trump, as a businessman prior to running for the POTUS, did business in an international clientele list which may have included Russian businessmen, he probably colluded with Russia to win this election. The MSM made the story far more complicated than it needed to be to explain how an event occurred. Fake news. There is literally no logic or reason to that statement and no evidence was actually presented to justify such allegations. Just shadowy sources within the government that made the claim. Translation, an overly complicated explanation for why an event occurred that is only corroborated by shadowy government sources that can't or won't provide solid evidence to substantiate the claim is reported by MSN, a.k.a. fake news. Oh, I'm getting close to the end of my time. Oh, I may have time. Grimmy, I may go over a little bit. And number seven, guideline number seven, if a political or public fig figure is involved in potentially morally ambiguous dealings, i.e. their corrupt scumbags, look for disproportionate levels of outrage or emotional manipulation efforts to find the perpetrators of fake news. Yeah, find those that ratted them out. People are prone to failure of all sorts, and it's what they do. Corruption is bound to show up in politics at some point. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what's important to understand is that it happens across all political parties and affiliations. There are also a series of political understandings within Washington, D.C. that allow those who have been caught in such acts the ability to withdraw from um, consideration for political appointments and fade into retirement or obscurity. Yes, you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar. Yes, you abused the public's trust. Yes, you took money from the wrong people. Now go on your way. We won't put you in jail, but you're a liability to us, so we don't want to see you again. To be clear, I'm not a fan of this kind of behavior. In the Pledge of Allegiance that I said growing up, I said, with liberty and justice for all. Somehow, that is not this country anymore. Fake news always rides in on its white horse to rescue these people from obscurity by alleging that they're proof of some heinous conspiracy between these administration and whatever new arch enemy of the United States exists in the current political climate, fake news has always come from the same media organizations that are willing to denounce such behavior now, but had no qualms about the same behavior when their team was running the show. Some outweigh outrage is probably warranted in these stories. Excessive amounts for comparatively smaller offenses is a clear indicator that partisan hacks are pushing an agenda. Case in point, Michael Flynn and Bill slash Hillary Clinton. Mike, excuse me, this must be really current. Michael Flynn is currently a hot topic in the news as he accepted money as a payment for a speech he gave back on December 10th, 2015 to Russia Today, 
a Russian government-owned English-language media outlet on which he made semi-regular appearances as an analyst after he retired from U.S. government service. Sounds bad, right? All the media chatter says that he violated the emoluments clause of the Constitution, which, according to 37 U.S. Code 908 states, Congress consents to the following persons accepting civil employment and compensation for that employment, for which the consent of Congress is required by the last paragraph of Section 9 of Article 1 of the Constitution related to acceptance of emollients, offices, or titles from foreign government. Retired members of uniformed services, members of the reserve uh, component of armed forces, members of the Commission Reserve Corps of Public Health Service, B. Approval required is a person described in subsection A may accept employment or compensation described in that section only if the Secretary concerned and the Secretary of State approve the employment. But what about all those or what about those who are civil servants and not ex-military? Equal treatment under the law means that the same measures that are aimed at retired servicemen and women should apply to those who have served in civil service side of our government. In other words, what about those who may have served as, oh, I don't know, POTUS of the United States, or Secretary of State, or Senator? Well, let's stick with POTUS, as technically he is the Commander-in-Chief of the military, so it'll make the whole argument simpler. Why is Bill Clinton, a Democratic president, allowed to collect $500,000 for a speech he delivered in Russia on behalf of a Russian state-owned corporation that was seeking to obtain controlling interest in a company for their mining rights for uranium, a strategic military asset in America and abroad, while his wife is Secretary of State? and is also on the record as giving hundreds of other speeches for millions of dollars, including some on issues that contradicted official U.S. policy in some regions, again, while his wife was Secretary of State. And he can be seen as a good guy who did nothing wrong, yet a retired member of the Uniformed Forces, a lifelong Democrat who happens to work for a Republican POTUS, who gives a speech on the state of the world on behalf of the same country, gets paid significantly less for it, and he is suddenly a national security threat and a violator of the Emollients Act, but Clinton is not. So how does that work out? Well, I'll tell you how, because it's fake news. If you treat those who break the same law differently because of who they are or which team they play for, you're a fake news pusher. If your outrage is at who did the law breaking or who they work for and not at the law breaking itself or the consequences of the questionable behavior, you're a fake news aficionado and a partisan hack who is part of the problem. The point is, I'm getting tired of the hypocritical, phony outrage and fake news stories coming from corporate lame-ass propaganda fake news sources who are actively trying to manipulate and control the public. And I'm tired of hearing them bitch about how other fake news sites are corrupting the outcome of events. When people don't just do what they want or uh, what they want them to do. It all seems just a little too fake for me. I like my news like I like my women. Real, honest, direct, and insightful. And there better be some funnies that come with it. All right, Damien. Thank you ever so much. He does go on to say, Media is run by people. People lie. And that's not likely to change anytime soon. So if you want to stay accurately informed and avoid the strings that media and politicians are trying to tie to you to turn you into their puppet, you'll have to learn to identify the tricks that they employ to get you to put their strings around your neck. Hopefully, the above set of guidelines will help you identify and avoid fake news sites going forward. Best of luck. 
Thank you, Damien. I will just go ahead and share this. Now, I am, yeah, Grim, I'm going to run a couple minutes over because I do want to get to pigazette.com. So, um, in any case, dun dun dun. So, where is the pig? There's the pig. Free state of pig. Let's go find out what happened this date in history. Real fast. And then I'll get out of your way. So, the 14th of December, 1503. Noted bullcrap artist Nostradamus, born spouting gibberish, a habit that he never manages to shake. Ironically, he fails to predict that first butt swat. Hmm, didn't see that one coming, did ya? And lastly, this date in history, the 14th of December, 1799, the man who carried the hopes and dreams of American liberty on his broad shoulders through the darkest hours of the revolution, George Washington, dies at 66. Wow, he was rather young, but at that time, possibly not. Oh, well. Y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening. You've been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com channel 10. Also on the RLM Spreaker channel. I will be back next week Wednesday for the Wackadoodle Wednesday edition of the Rocket Chair. But don't leave. Don't leave yet because there's more coming on this evening. Grimner and Moose Girl will be on later with the Freakers Ball. Tomorrow at noon Eastern Time will be... Um, Flash Dork, and I have no idea who else, but Flash Dork with the Dork Table. Uh, Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimner is going to be hopping on the radio, and he's going to be playing some blues for you. And there's going to be a rousing game of chat going on in the chat room. I just know it. I foresee it. I'm a prognosticator of that. No, actually, I saw the schedule. Um, also... <coughs> Um, directly following Grim will be Hal Anthony, who's going to be opening up a can of whoop ass on yo ass behind the woodshed on Sunday. Then Monday evening, is it Monday evening, Grim? Oh man, I said I said the schedule, and then I really haven't looked at the schedule. Shame on me. There, there it is. There it is. We'll just look at the uh, real liberty schedule, Grimmy. Are you not on there? Oh. Let me. Ah. You know what? This is probably an old link. <laughs> probably is. Let me see. Yeah, it's a way old link. I'm going to have to get rid of that link. Uh, Grimmy, is it Monday or Tuesday that you do your uh, leftovers? Grimmy's on one of those nights. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, but I'm not positive. Just check. Just keep coming back. He'll be there, and it's really pretty awesome. In any case, I'm going to get out of here because I am, yeah, I'm three minutes over already. So, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening and a nice weekend as well. Oh, Grimmy said it's Monday. Booyah! So, I will catch y'all on the flip side. I'll be popping in from time to time here in the RLM chat um, when I'm not at Woik. So until then, please remember, I truly do love you all and I wish you all enough. Good night.